continuing on our first day coverage for CS Live of all things AI, we have a special guest, uh, Radhika Arora, Senior Director of Product Management for Automotive Sensors from OnSemi. Welcome to the show, uh, Radhika, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Nandan. Firstly, uh, thank you for having me on this podcast. Uh, great to meet you in person after all the uh, Teams meetings we've had. Uh, so I currently run the product management team for the Automotive Image Sensor Group. Um, it's one of our uh, focus areas uh, within the company. Uh, we've gone through a transformation uh, within OnSemi in the last couple of years, uh, where we've had a uh, laser focus on uh, intelligent power and intelligent sensing. Intelligent sensing is uh, the part that uh, my group is focused on. Uh, we've been in the market uh, for a long time. Uh, we probably had the first uh, HDR sensor that went inside a car, and we continue to build on that legacy, introducing uh, new ideas and uh, breakthrough technologies within the sensing space. So super excited to be at CES. I believe it's, what, the 58th year of the show, and you continue to see all the breakthrough technologies and core key gadgets. So yeah, fantastic uh, start to the year. And that is a great intro. And I think you're right in that it is a lot of quirky gadgets. Um, have you had a chance to look at the show yet? Or do you have a, an idea of what you're looking for in the trends at CES this year? So uh, it's certainly going to be AI everywhere, right? With chat GPT and the frenzy that it's caused, uh, everyone wants to jump on that AI train. And frankly, I don't think people know where it's going to end up, but they definitely want to be part of that ride. Uh, the question is uh, not where we are seeing AI, but where is AI not present? We're going to just see it in every single facet of life. Um, automotive is, uh, it provides a big stage here at CES now. Uh, we certainly look forward to a lot of uh, announcements and getting a purview into the EV future from uh, our automotive customers as well. And a lot of debuts coming in too. So of course, we've got traditional companies like Mercedes and uh, Hyundai, uh, where they've announced that they're gonna be making some big splashes here. But uh, what's also equally exciting is newcomers like Winfast, which is this EV customer out of um, Vietnam. And it's their debut here at CES. So I'm just super excited to see uh, what the entire spectrum is going to offer. And then, of course, um, you've got uh, announcements being made by Intel and AMD on uh, the uh, AI laptops mm -hmm. and desktops. So they've got the neural processing units and uh, supporting these AI workloads. So looking forward to what those offerings are going to be. That sounds, you know like quite a full plate here. Um, but one of the things you mentioned at the beginning seems to be really coming together, which is as you get into EVs, right? And you get to AI everywhere, um, you can't just do it on the cloud. And clearly you guys are leaders in the sensor area and you're beginning to see AI much closer to the sensor. So what are the um, areas that you feel that you guys are, working on that fit into that category and what are the challenges of AI in that space and what are the next steps? Yeah, so I think as we talk more and more about AI, AI on the edge is becoming part of that conversation. And the reason is when you look at the amount of data that you're working with, let's be honest, these systems are not optimized for uploads, but more so for downloads. So, which means you are going to have problems with latency and power and bandwidth issues, uh, not to mention privacy issues as well. Uh, so that's where our partnership uh, with uh, companies such as yours uh, comes into play as well. And by the way, congratulations on the launch of your uh, product line. Um, but coming back to some of the applications and use cases, as you were asking, uh, Coming from the automotive side, when we look at uh, how the in-cabin is changing, and frankly, I think a lot of the decisions today from our end users are based on what the in-cabin has to offer. 
Now, the in-cabin is changing both to address safety needs as well as um, its, uh, its more aesthetics and comfort. So when it comes to safety, you've got NCAP and other such governing bodies across the globe based on what region you are, uh, which are dictating driver monitoring, drowsiness, driver fatigue. Uh, and also uh, there is a new use case that we're going after, which is uh, smart airbag deployment. Uh, based on what the position uh, of the person in the vehicle is, both the driver and passenger side, based on what the size is, uh, the airbag adjusts its deployment intensity. And that is, again, safety driven. Uh, then there is another facet going into um, uh, the aesthetics piece of it, where uh, based on what the preferences are, how you're setting the preferences previously, how you're doing the facial recognition of the person, uh, the car changes mm -hmm. its look and feel for the person. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting time ahead as we look to integrate some of these smarts into our sensors in order to improve the efficiency, lower the power, um, and lower uh, the amount of data that's being passed through. So that's going to be a big trend uh, looking into the future. I think you've actually captured so many things into that statement there because it's about user experience, which is more intuitive than rather than push of a button. Mm -hmm. It is actually contextual because your uh, the state of the driver or the passengers is being taken care of. There's a personalization aspect of it that comes in. So there's a lot of things that you don't want computed far away for privacy reasons, for security reasons, and experience real-time response reasons. That's right. right. And so, in fact, what you're pointing out is there's more and more that needs to be done close to the sensor, right? Uh, and you guys are seeing that as a challenge and an opportunity to kind of make inroads into the market. And this time I'll do something self-serving because part of the our partnership has been around the time of flight sensor, which goes around... Uh, how do you actually smartly deploy airbags? And we've demonstrated here. Um, plus that kind of leads itself to other things that potentially prevent spoofing on security. Um, how do you like the demo that uh, we put together to, and what would you say that uh, about that to uh, uh, the audience? I think it really does justice in proving out this use case. Uh, we are early entrants into this um, uh, market spot. So the fact that we've been able to jointly demonstrate this, it's done a fantastic job. In fact, I strongly encourage uh, the listeners of this post podcast to come have a look at it while you're here at CES. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> well, thanks, Radhika. And we have to thank your team as well for uh, you know partnering. I'm sure there are plenty of providers um, that would would love to work with you guys. Um, thanks for spending time with us and actually putting this together. We look forward to this to be a, a more fruitful partnership in the future. Likewise. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, Radhika. Cheers. Cheers.